welcome to the Wisdom Rising podcast. I'm your host, Lama Sultrama Alione. And my goal with this podcast is really to open your own wisdom, to have your own wisdom rising, either through the meditations that I lead or introduce you to, or to the people that I interview that bring wisdom with them in their own voice, in their own traditions. So we look forward to raising our wisdom together on the Wisdom Rising podcast. And I'm so happy to share this with you. Greetings, everyone. Warm greetings from warm Costa Rica. <laughs> nice to be with you. So today I'm going to be leading you, teaching you basic meditation, basic sitting meditation called Chamanta in Sanskrit and Shine in Tibetan. What I'm going to teach you is from the Tibetan tradition. And I learned this from my teacher named Abu Rinpoche, just so you know my lineage of this. I had finished prostrations, the 100,000 full prostrations, took me three months of full time doing that. And I said, I want to learn to meditate. And he said, okay, since you've finished prostrations, you can. And so... I began with him, and the way he taught it was about every two weeks, he would call me down from my retreat cabin on the hillside in, in the Himalayas, in the Indian Himalayas where we were living. Uh, he was living below. I was living in a cabin above his house. And then he would give me another one, another version of, of the practice, sort of the next level of it. And so he would always ask me, what's your experience? What have you been experiencing? And then when I told him, he would decide if he would give me the next one or if he wanted me to do it longer, whichever one he'd done. So that was my first training. And then my next training was with Chogyam Trungpa Rinpoche when I came back to the United States from India and Nepal in 1973. and. So I trained with him in a method which he taught, and this was what he taught everyone, and it's just one method. And so that's what I'm going to teach you since I won't have the opportunity to be teaching you again and again, week after week, personally. So I'm going to teach you this method, which is really a, a wonderful method, and it's enough. You, you don't need all these other methods, so don't feel like you didn't get the real thing. All right, now the method of sitting. So let's take the posture. I'm going to put my hands on my knees. I've got my back straight. I've got my legs crossed. It is okay to kneel. You know those benches? You can get these meditation benches that are sort of slightly tipped, or you can pile up cushions. That's fine. The back is the main thing. Okay. So now let's start by changing air. Inhale and exhale. Pressing down, lock the elbows, tuck the chin, turning up to the left. This is going to be dirty red for me and dirty white for the men. Turning into nectar. And the next side will be dirty white for the women and dirty red for the men. Now this is the clearer one. Keep, turn the hand out so your elbow goes really up. Now this is the clear round. Remember the rainbow light. Now, both arms are locked, pressing down in the Vajra fist. Inhale, 
rainbow light. And the three part blue exhalation ignorance. And then place the hands on your knees and notice the circulation of the wisdom prana. And now take the seven point posture. Start the top of the head with the eyes, the tongue, chin, shoulder blades. The back, didn't mention the back. The back is the vertebrae or like gold coins, one stacked on another. The hand and the legs. Those are the seven points. And now the method is bring your attention to your breath. Don't change your breath at all. Just bring your attention to your breath. The breath is always moving. Be pure attention with it. If the breath slows down, that's okay, but don't try to make it do anything. Just be with it as it is. When thoughts arise, just simply come back to the breath. Soon as, you, as soon as you've recognized, oh, I'm thinking, come back to the breath without any feeling of, I'm a bad meditator, I'm so distracted, no judgment. Keep it really simple. Cool. Wandering, mind wandering. Come back to the breath. There's a question, are we breathing through both the nose and the mouth? Not thinking about that. If that happens, it happens. And probably since the mouth is open, there will be some air that passes through. You may notice that you feel peace or you might feel a slight sensation of bliss in your body. Or it's called peaceful abiding. There's nothing that's supposed to happen 
all you're doing is showing up here and doing it. To have a good meditation is just doing it. Even five minutes of meditation a day has been proven to help with depression, anxiety, and distraction. Five minutes. There's a question, why is that white light or the red light dirty? Because those uh, that's the clogged up prana in our body. Or our thoughts, our emotions, our obscurations. What is the right time to meditate? The best time is first thing in the morning and early in the morning before everyone else gets up. Uh, in India, which is a country that really, meditation is part of their culture. They get up very early and everyone does their sadhana, whatever it is, very early in the morning. So by the time everyone else is up, that's done. Tibetans do that too. Get up early, but if that's, you know, if you don't get enough sleep, if you do that, then just as soon as you get up. For me, when I had kids, I did it when they got on the bus, went to school. Because I didn't have time in the morning. Then once they were gone, I could do it. So whatever works for you. Usually earlier in the day is better. But also sunset is a nice time to meditate. In Costa Rica, sunset is like a religion. Everyone watches the sunset. And so I like to go to the ocean and meditate as the sun sets. Yeah, what is the position of the hands? Yeah, it's just, I'll put the camera down so we can see. Just like this, on my knees. Um, or in that posture that I showed you before, like this. So the thumbs are barely touching and they're vertical over the fingers. I notice I, I have a habit of that. And sometimes when I'm just listening to people talk or I really want to concentrate, I find that I've done I've done this with my hands without realizing it. So if you haven't tried this, try the try try doing this just to notice how it feels. It's kind of like there's a little buzz where your thumbs connect. What about if you have pain? Meditation is really helpful with pain, chronic pain. Just note your pain and come back to your breath. Allow it. Allow it to try to get rid of it. She's like, okay, pain. Pain's there. But so is my breath. <laughs> Somebody wrote, dropping the jaw with a slightly open mouth does make a huge difference. It's interesting, isn't it? But if I get super tired and sleepy as soon as I start meditating, that is actually a fairly common problem. And people who aren't even tired, as soon as they start to meditate, it's like, 
That is karmic obscurations. That's from uh, that's from your karma, and it just happens. And you, uh, you'll go through a period of that. You just keep sitting, and after a while, that goes away. One of the um, advice, if that happens, is to raise the gaze slightly, like look straight ahead or slightly up, to wear less clothes when you meditate, so you're not hot, not cold, but just not hot. And also, if you eat less, especially eat less heavy food, those are the um, indications if you're sleepy. Another issue that comes up with meditation is agitation. Not sleepy, you're more like wired. If that happens, then you lower the gaze. You can close the eyes, wear more clothes, and eat more. And with the sleep, also straighten your posture. And if you're really sleeping, take a nap. Sometimes when I'm practicing, I'm just like, I'm really tired. So I just take a nap and then continue. I'm experiencing a slight loss of direction, like disoriented. Come back to the breath. So let's dedicate the merit of this meditation. I'll take a few minutes to answer more questions. Let's just end the meditation. Dedicating the merit means offering any positive energy that you gain doing it to all beings. Give it away. And in the beginning, generate bodhicitta. This is the mudra for generating bodhicitta. It's called one-pointed dedication to the benefit of beings. Beginning and then the end, just, and then let that go. But yeah. Uh, there's, uh, <laughs> thank you. Um, how long? That's a good question. Yeah. Well, I would start short. Sure. Don't try to do too much because you'll get discouraged. Of course, when I was started, I started with an hour. You can try that. However, I think a realistic time to start is 10 minutes, which seems very short, but when you're meditating, it can seem pretty long. So if you have a phone that has a timer on it, I suggest you put that on. It has a little gong or sound that comes when that 10 minutes is over. There's also apps for that, meditation timing apps. And then increase it 10 minutes, 20 minutes, 40 minutes. I think generally a good period of daily practice would be 40 minutes. That's how long the Zen uh, sessions are when, when you practice Zen meditation is 40 minutes. You can do several hours too. And then there's walking meditation. And maybe next time I'll talk about that. Yeah, now you have basic sitting practice. So let's uh, let's do it this week. And then let's hear what happened. Did you do it every day? What happened when you did? How long did you do it? And of course, you have to be honest. <laughs> and we'll uh, keep each other on track that way. So I'll be teaching different meditations, but I wanted to start with this one. It's fundamental. Uh, and the breathing, that's a whole practice in itself. So tell your friends about it, and then we'll be together in a week. And um, blessings to all of you for this week. Stay positive. Stay compassionate. Generate loving awareness all beings and your life will get better love to all of you
Lots of love, everyone. And I'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for being with us for this Wisdom Rising podcast. May it benefit all beings. And I'd like to take a moment to thank the production team of Wisdom Rising and also to let you know that if you would like further information on my work or the associated people who work with Tara Mandala, you can reach out to the Tara Mandala website, T-A-R-A-M-A-N, D-A-L-A dot O-R-G. Thanks, everyone. Stay safe.